Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on solving linear equations. But in this video, what we're going to do is look at solving fractional equations where we've got one term that contains a fraction. And we start off with this very simple one. We've got x divided by 3 equals 4. And I picked this simple one because I know you can guess the answer, something divided by 3 is 4, it's going to be 12. But that's not the point. What I want to do is demonstrate how we go about breaking these type of questions down, the methods we use, so that when we get to the harder types, we can just follow this simple method. So what is this method? Well, we need to get rid of the fraction. And in this example, it's going to be the 3. And to get rid of the 3, we need to multiply both sides by 3. So what we'll do is we'll say 3, OK, multiplied by the left-hand side, x over 3, OK, equals, and we've got to do 3 times the right-hand side. So we've got 3 multiplied by the 4, OK? Better put there 4 because it follows from above. Now, when I multiply the 3 with x over 3, what we would find is that these two 3's cancel one another out. What we've effectively got is 3x over 3. So the 3's cancel, leaving us with 1x over 1, which is just going to be simply x. So you end up with, therefore, x equals 3 4's, which are 12. And this is the answer then that uh, was so obvious. But as we work our way through this exercise, hopefully you'll start to see how we always get rid of the fraction here as our highest priority. So we'll take another equation just with one term that's got a fraction in. 8 over x equals, and then we've got 4. Now, I need to get rid of the fraction, and in this example, we've got to get rid of the x. Notice that, you, again, you could guess the answer for this one. 8 divided by something equals 4. It's going to be 2 at the end of the day. But just to go through that process, we need to get rid of the fraction, first of all. And it's an x, so we multiply both sides by x. So we've got, at the moment, 8 over x equals 4. And we're just going to multiply by that x. So I'll put an x there, and I'll put an x. It doesn't matter which side you put it on, OK? I'll put it there. And we're multiplying that x with each of those two terms. What actually happens? Well, this x cancels out with this x, OK? So you've got just simply 8. You would have had 8x over x. The x's cancel leaving us with that 8. So therefore, what we've got is 8 equals x times 4, which would look better as 4x. And now all I do need to do is just divide both sides by 4. And so we'd have 8 over 4, or 8 divided by 4, equals 4x divided by 4, which is just going to be x. And therefore, 8 divided by 4 we know is 2, so therefore x equals 2. OK, so it's taken a long while to get down to an answer that we knew at the start. But as I say, that's not the point. It's the method that's important at this stage. OK, well, let's just start to develop this a bit further. OK, we'll just section that off. And we'll come in with the third example. Now, in my third example, what I want to do is take an equation where we've got 5x minus 3, a couple of terms here, divided by, say, a number, let's say 4. So this is now one term, and it equals another term, 2. So we've got our fractional equation. One term contains that fraction, the 4. So we need to get rid of the 4. We multiply, then, both sides by the 4. So we're going to have 4 multiplied by 5x minus 3, OK, 
over 4. I'll put that in brackets. And again, we multiply the right hand side by the 4. And again, it doesn't matter if I put the 4 in front of the 2 or behind it. Okay, and that's true even with this term here. Okay, I could have put the 4 this side. Whatever though, these 4s cancel. Go into one another once, leaving us with just simply 1 times 5x minus 3 which is 5x minus 3 all over 1 so it's just 5x minus 3. So we therefore got 5x minus 3 and it equals 4 twos which are 8. And from here on we should be familiar with this. We add 3 to both sides get rid of that constant so we're just left with 5x equals 8 plus the 3 which is 11. And then I separate the 5 from the x now by dividing both sides by 5. So 5x divided by 5 gives me x and 11 divided by 5, well that's 11 fifths. I could leave it like that or I could turn it to a mixed fraction and that would be x equals 2 and 1 fifth. Alright? Okay, let's just try another one now. Okay, so we'll border that one off. And with this example, number 4, what I want to do is we'll put an x term in the denominator. We'll have 3 equals a couple of terms here, 15x plus 2. But if we divide all of this, we now create one term, but I'll divide it by 4x. So we've got a combination of a number and x in the denominator here. So you might even want to have a go at this yourself at this stage. So if that's the case, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video and you can come back in a moment and check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So what would we want to do first of all? Well, we need to get rid of the fraction here in the denominator, the 4x. OK, so we need to multiply both sides by 4x. So we'll do 4x then multiplied by the 3. And that's going to equal, again, 4x multiplied by our fraction here. We'll put that in brackets as 15x plus 2 all over 4x. And as usual, the 4x will cancel out with that 4x. So what we therefore have is 4x times 3, which is going to be 12x, equals, and we're just left with 15x plus 2. And to solve this should be fairly straightforward now. What I'm going to do is, let's say, take the 12x from both sides, because I can see that 15x is bigger than that 12x. Not that I have to, I could take 15x from both sides. I'll leave it up to you anyway. I'm going to take 12x from both sides, so that will leave me with 0 here. And then I've got 15x take away 12x, which is 3x. And we've got the plus 2. Now I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides and I end up with minus 2, 0 take away 2 is minus 2, equals the 3x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 now and that will be minus 2 divided by 3 equals x. So it would look better if I turn this round, write it as x equals a minus 2 divided by 3 is better as minus two-thirds. OK? OK, well, I hope that's given you an idea of how we start to go about, anyway, solving fractional equations. You'll notice, though, that in the examples I've given you here, we're just looking at equations that consist of two terms, and only one of those terms consists of a fraction here. And in the denominator of each of these fractions, we've just got one term. The x here, the 3, the 4, and the 4x. 
What I'll be doing next is to extend this idea where we've got more than one term in the denominator. Okay, so hope that uh, gives you some idea of these types anyway.